Hello, this is Jeff Robertson, National Sales Manager with Penton Audio USA, and this is a short tutorial video on how to connect to an IDA8 mass notification control system processor, as well as reversing a store design, compiling and storing any changes to your design. So let's get started. I'm going to launch my T Studio software. When the software launches, you're going to be, see this blank screen. Uh, you may, down here at the bottom, be on the third-party command or control list windows or tabs. Make sure you go over to the device management tab right there. Any devices on your system or on the network that your PC is connected to should automatically be detected. As you can see down here in the bottom, we have an auto search option down here, which is defaulted. So it's automatically going to search for any IDA8 processors that it sees out there. Now I know I'm connected but I don't see any. Well one of the first things you want to do is go up to tools and go down to communications. This is where the so you're telling the software what device or networking device in my computer do I want to use to go out and search for any of the AT Studio software machines. So I hit communications and you can see mine is defaulted to my wireless adapter. But I'm actually plugged into a manual switch connected up to an IDA8 so I'm going to change this to my actual LAN connector and then once it sees that and goes through it there you go now we see my, we have an IDA8C controller as well as an IDA8S secondary unit network together to the two units what I want to do is I want to actually reverse the software or the design that's in the unit so I don't have to recreate anything from scratch so the first thing I'm going to do is just highlight it anywhere on that line and you notice over here that we got a whole plethora of options and there's going to be many training videos going over several of these options but one of the options is reverse so I'll click on reverse and now it's going through and pulling up the design that's stored inside my IDA8C unit so if I double click on there you'll see all my fun design stuff that's in there so we'll deal with this later the other thing that we need to do is once I click on the unit and go into it, you'll see this mapping come up. If you try to compile and store without the mapping, you will get an error. The mapping is used to tell the IDHC, hey, I want you to go out and give IDs, and it actually goes out and says, okay, I got an ID8 at 8S, the first one, and it gives it an ID 1-2 or comma 2. If you have multiple, it would be 1-3, 1, 1 comma 4, 1 comma whatever. Um, if you had more multiple IDA8Cs on the system. They would all show up here on the ATS as their own um, and it would be like 2-1, 2-2, 2-3, etc. So that's where the mapping comes into play. Also something very, very, very important that we don't have in here, um, but if you ever see the option where it says deploy, that is very important to you when you're making any changes or anything to a system you see deploy right here deploy is if you make any changes to an existing mapped network let's say you had an ID8C with one secondary unit and you did your design and then down the road you came and added another secondary unit maybe they added more zones or expanded the system well then you would have to go back and actually deploy and what that would tell the IDA8C to do is actually go out there and recheck again all the secondary units that are connected to you and then it will show up right down here in your menu drop so that's deploy you never want to use deploy after you've done your design and mapped it because it will erase all your mapping and then you got to start over so just keep that in mind so okay we have our design we are connected to the machine so what we need to do now is we want to compile our design and we haven't made any changes so if I just delete this line right here and then we come back in here actually reconnect this design that's a change so now let's go up here to operation and we want to compile and there we go we are compiled if there was any problems any mapping issues or whatever you would have had a warning pop up telling you make sure you get those straight or if you had any errors it wouldn't let you compile then it would also give you those warnings as well and after you compile we can now go and say store and it's going to go and you see both the controller and the slave is doing the privileges the pre-checks the checks configurations all your event info any warnings or errors will pop up at this point 
but we are all green. It says, do we want to turn on audio? We'll say yes. And do we want to go online? Basically, do we want to be, stay connected to the system and actually monitor signals and levels and make live changes? If we say no, the system's stored. It's doing its thing. We're just not physically connected with the PC to do all the monitoring. Maybe we're going to program something else. But I'll say yes at this point. And now... We are totally connected and live with the system. As you can see down here, it shows the connection. That's the PC connected to, the, to ID8C. And also the ATIS net, which is the network link from the ID8Cs to the ID8S secondary units. And we can see everything is nice and stable and green. And we are done. So I can actually close out my program. It'll say, do I, I have to go offline first? We are offline. I can close the program. It says, do I want to save it? And I'll go ahead and say yes. And I'll take it back to my default demo. And there we go. We'll replace it. And there you have it. You have connected, searched, reversed the program inside of an IDA8S, compiled your design after you make any changes or corrections, and stored your design, went online, and then went offline to close it. So you are well on your way to becoming an IDAA programmer. And please look for additional videos on this. The next one will be on how to update the current software or firmware inside of an IDAAC unit to a later version. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day.